Yes. <coughs> so in the last class that we discussed the, the introduction part of data science. Next, we discuss the introduction machine learning. Next, we discuss the introduction to Python programming. So these are the basics. All right. So these are all the basics that we discussed that what is a data science what is machine learning what is python programming language in this python programming language what is a python okay who it is developed when it is developed why okay they named it as a python programming language what are the different applications that we are having in this python programming language okay what are the futures that we are having what type of futures that they extracted from the existing programming languages what are the main okay advantage when compared to the existing programming languages like a C, C++ or Java? All right. So these are all the basics that we discussed in the last class. Right. Now we are going to work with the Python programming language. Before working with this Python programming language, first you have to know that how to install this Python in our system, and then we have to work on that. Yes. First, let us start that how to download this Python. So the official website of this Python programming language, it is a www.python.org is the official website. Right. Once go to this python.org. Otherwise, simply let us type Python in the Google. OK, you'll get the first official link. Right. Simply let us go to this Python programming www.python.org org is the official website of this python programming language so here we have to go to downloads just keep your cursor at the point of download so if with you if you have a laptop so let us start working now yes so let us go to downloads and then let us click on the python 3.8.0 and then click on python 3.8.0 so the latest version which is released the last 10 days or 15 days back that it is python 3.8.0 before that we are having a version that it is called python 3.7.4 is the version that we are having right so now we are going to work with the version that it is called python 3.8.0 so let us click on this python 3.8.0 once if you click on this automatically the file will be downloaded in our system the size of the file it is 25 mb the size of the file it is 25 mb so that is the downloaded okay so like this you have to open otherwise let us click on this and then open this once if you open this okay then one file will be open like this at the time of installation one point that you have to know that it is you have to click on this checkbox add path 3.8 to path add python 3.82 path so what will happen if you click on this means automatically the python path is going to set into your current working directory so in all the systems what is the current working directory means once observe here what is the current working directory so in c drive in c drive users okay then your system name at the time of installing your operating system right so there you are going to give one system name otherwise you can change that system name from your side also with your system name one folder is there with your system name one folder is this that it is okay here in my system it is data hill is my folder okay and then click on this so whatever the okay path that you are observing whatever the location that you are observing this location is called 
current working directory in our system. So this is the default path that you are having in our systems. Once again, that I am repeating in C drive, C drive, users, okay, the system name, system name, okay, that it is depends on your system name. So this is the current working directory. So once if you inst once if you click on this add path add Python 3.82 py path automatically this Python is going to sit in that current working directory. Otherwise, what will happen means if you if you not check this add Python right. So manually you have to set the path of an installation. Otherwise, then you'll get some okay you'll get some errors at the time of executing. Path is very important. All right so simply so let us select the add python 3.82 path just a minute So like this, you have to select and then you have to click on this install now. Okay, so your installation is very simple. It will take nearly, okay, uh, one minute or maximum two minutes, right? So at the time of installation, no need to do any other, okay, manipulations, no need to modify any other setup here. Just you have to click on this install now and then click next, next finish. Only three or three steps that you have to, okay, do next next and then finish no need to do anything it will take less than two minutes to install in our system it's very simple to install no need to do any other manipulations right so next next and then finish once if you finish this setup so already it is available in my system so i'm not installing once again what will happen if you install okay multiple times means multiple times it will create the path and it will give some problems at the time of running right so from your side also if it is failure at the first time let us uninstall that file in the okay installed list and then let us delete the folders which is related to this python in the c drive and then let us install again if you if you forget that to add this python or something happened right so that you have to delete okay everything from your system the installation or folder and so and so after okay uninstalling then only you have to start once again don't try multiple times okay for installation all right once it is okay once you will receive a message final message successfully completed and then click on the finish button is it clear right once it is completed so let us start installation So this is the password. Wi-Fi password. Note it. If you whenever if you want to connect, connect it. Yes. So once the installation is completed, once the installation is completed, then how to open this Python? How to check that Python is installed in your system or not? All right. So let us go to the command prompt. So let us go to the command prompt. How to go to the command prompt? So control R, okay, directly or go to run command and then type CMD. Otherwise, even if you search CMD, you'll get okay, move to the command prompt. So this is the command prompt in my system. I just I change the background color by default. It is black color, right? This is the command prompt. Okay. Now, how to check the Python is available in your system or not? Simply let us type Python. Simply let us type Python. So now it is showing that in my system Python 3.7.4 is available. 
so this is the so and so message that it is having okay well, uh, when i install okay what is the version that i am having so and so messages that it is giving and then it is giving some okay uh, help also that how to work on that next whatever the three angular brackets that you are observing here this is called a python prompt so here you can write the code okay for python here you can write the python code is it clear All right now we entered into the python prompt that is python shell All right so in the last class that we discussed that that we are having two types of modes python modes we are having two types one is a interactive mode programming second one is scripting mode programming interactive mode programming and second one is scripting mode programming yes two types of modes that we are having okay interactive mode interactive is one of the feature for this python programming language why because no other programming language is having this type of feature directly interact with the programming all right so we, here this is the python prompt python shell directly we are going to okay interact with that see simply we are sitting in the front of the python prompt and then we are going to interacting with the python directly so this type of feature this type of mode is called a interactive mode all right now already you know that that in the last class that we discussed that how to print a hello world so if you want to print a hello world in the c language there you have to start with the header file and so and so in c okay java there you have to start with the class and nearly you have to write seven to eight lines of codes for simply printing the hello world but in this okay python directly we are going to write the code without any header files and without any classes simply print hello world and then we observe that it okay it is a line by line execution right once if you click on enter then it is going to execute by itself no need to compile from your side it is a interpreter right so directly it is going to execute and then it is going to print the output so this is the output is it clear that s yes. so like this we have to interact with the python programming language and also that we discussed that python is a dynamic typed language so no need to declare the data types from your side everything take care by the python itself right for example in any one of the programming language that i want to take the value 10 so that value that we have to assign into the variable what is a variable which stores the memory in the system so if you want to store the 10 in your system means that you require some address in the memory right that address is hold by the variable variable and then in the programming languages that you have to mention that what type of data type it is that a is belongs to integer data type okay like this you have to declare in the programming language any one of the programming language but in the python programming language so that we observed in the future that it is a dynamic typed language so dynamic typed language means no need to declare the data type from your side by default the python is going to take care about the data type if it is 10 automatically it will understand that it is a integer if it is a string automatically it will understand that it is a string data type it is a true or false automatically it will understand that it is a logical value so like this okay dynamically it is going to take the decisions so that's why we are saying it is a dynamic type of language now with an example let us observe here now what i am doing here means i am doing some addition simply i am taking a equals to 10 i am not declaring any data types here then b equals to 20 b equals to 20 and then the simple logic that i required that okay i want to do addition of a plus b all right now let us print this a plus b let us print this a plus b otherwise if you want to write a logic like uh, that a plus b you want to assign into some of the variable and then if you want to print that means you can write like this also c equals to a plus b 
c equals to a plus b and uh, let us print this c let us print this c so this is the output is it clear like this we have to write the code in the python so what what is the point that we have to observe here means whenever if i write a equals to 10 and then if i move to the next line that a equal to 10 is executed or not a equal to 10 is executed right and then b equal to 20 and i move to the next line what will happen b equal to 10 20 is executed right like this here in this interactive what will happen means here it will execute line by line here it will execute line by line that is the process in the okay interactive mode that is the process in the interactive mode next coming to the scripting mode is it clear that how to work with the interactive mode so directly we are going to work in the, okay with the python prompt in the setting of the python prompt and then we are going to work right so that it is called interactive mode coming to the scripting mode scripting mode is nothing but we are going to write the code in any one of the script that we are taking one editor we are writing the code there and then we are going to execute that type of mode is called scripting mode see if you have an experience with the java okay or editor c right so what we are doing we are going to write some code in the notepad and then we are going to save that code with an extension dot c or dot java after that then we are going to run it okay so in java how you are working we are going to save that okay first we are going to write the code and then we are going to okay save the okay file name dot java and then we are going to move to the command prompt in this command prompt in this command prompt okay we are going to set the path the path is very important why because see for example file name dot java that you saved in the c drive you have to go to that path otherwise if you saved in one of the folder which belongs to e drive you have to move to that path and then you have to execute so the same process that we are going to do in this scripting mode also now let us start writing a code okay let us take one new notepad let us take one new notepad any one of the editor all right so let us open i'm opening one new one i'm opening one new one so this is the new file here simply i'm writing a python code right no need to declare int so and so simply we have to write a equals to 10 b equals to 20 next year c equals to a plus b and then let us print this c this is the code if i typing something is it is it is executing no. no it is one of the editor okay that there we can write the code that however that you required see if i want to change if i want to modify that okay this 10 into 100 how simple here but the same thing that if you want to do here what will happen means once if you move to the next line that line is executes okay once if you move to the next that previous line is execute right so there is no chance for editing otherwise again if you want to go there you have to type otherwise you have to use the up and down arrows in the interactive mode for the previous functions whatever the lines whatever the code that you return that if you require then you have to use up and down arrows like this so whatever the code that we return by using up and down arrows we can call like this right so and then we have to change that a equals to 100 and then you have to change that b equal to 200 so like this you have to edit like this you have to edit in the okay interactive mode but in the scripting mode that however that you required that you can execute for example here i want thousand i want to change the code here i want to change the code okay so you can change that however that you require and then let us save this file how to save this file means file go to save and where you are saving is very important if you forgot that where you stored that file right then it is not possible to execute that okay that file so now i am storing in the desktop i am storing in the desktop and then i am giving add.py what is the extension for this dot py is the extension for the python files for java it is dot java for c it is dot c for cpp it is dot cpp but here it is dot py 
and then let us select the text to document all types why because what will hap happen means sometimes here dot whatever the code that we return add dot py so here it is going to take as a file name and then by default it is going to give the extension dot txt so that's why it is better to mention okay save as type is all files is it clear that what i am saying right so otherwise let us do one thing if whatever the file here it is okay let us keep the entire file name dot extension with the single quote or double quote single quote or double quote but at the time no need to worry, worry about this save as type it will not add any extensions to that right so let us save this in the desktop and then i am closing this now once go to the desktop and then observe here so here the what is the extension for it dot py if i double click on this is it opening in the notepad no why because it is present it is in the okay python file format it is with the python file format yes so if you want to edit again the code then let us select it open with and then select the notepad and then edit the code and then save it is it clear right so anyhow this is the python file that we are having in the desktop and then let us start execution how to execute the code right so if you want to save the code then we are going to save with a file name file name that extension that it is called dot py we have to save the file like this after saving this file then we have to execute the file right so how to execute this file how to execute this file so here we have to execute right so don't worry about the compilation it is an interpreted programming language right no need to compile from your side everything will take care by itself then simply we have to execute the code right we have to go to the command prompt we have to go to the command prompt there we have to set the path there we have to set the path right wherever the file is located that path we have to set after setting the path that you have to execute like this python space file name dot py python space file name dot py so like this you have to execute in the scripting mode so present we are in command prompt or python prompt python shell present we are in python so let us exit from there otherwise let us take one new command prompt once if you exit in this python prompt then we will move to the command prompt is it clear so let us exit from here otherwise let us take one new command prompt and then let us start working on that so simply i am exiting from this python and then now present we are in command prompt now what is the current working directory c users your system name right so the if the file is whatever the demo.py file okay py file is there that file is available in your current working directory if you stored in this current working directory no need to change the path at the time of saving right if you move to this location and then if you save your file at the time no need to change the path but present the file is available in the desktop right so we have to change the directory to the desktop so for changing the directory we have to use cd space desktop cd the meaning it is change directory cd desktop and then let us enter so now we move to the desktop present our file is also available in the desktop now we are going to okay execute this python space what is the name of the file add dot py is the file let us execute it thousand two thousand okay thousand plus two thousand it is three thousand so
so like this you have to execute the code these are the points that you have to remember at the time of okay working with the scripting scripting is very comfortable right so you can write the code and again if you want to okay do the manipulations you can do very simply and then you can execute it right so this type of mode is called a scripting mode this type of mode is called a scripting mode right is it clear that now let us start working with ides what is id integrated development environment so now let us start working with the python id id means integrated environment right see what is the difference that you find with the interactive and scripting in interactive it is execute line by line all right so again if you want to modify that again we have to call it and then we have to modify all right so there it is not possible to execute multiple lines at a time interactive means okay the meaning here interactive interpreted means okay it is line by line execution interpreted so there is no chance for executing multiple lines at that time so that's why we are going to for the scripting mode that's why we are going for the scripting mode now if you observe the integrated development environments for the python there it is having lot of features for working for writing a code there it is providing okay user friendly facility to the developers right so whenever if you observe this in this prompt it is not having graphical support in the scripting mode also here also it is not having any graphical support all right everything that we are going to type okay with the okay we are going to give the input from the keyboard right so this ide is, is having the graphical user interface support maximum that we are going to work with the mouse and some shortcuts itself right so let us observe here whenever if you observe the java programming language java is having some of the ides like a eclipse is one of the ide netbeans is the ide so if you observe the mysql database mysql is having one mysql workbench ide like that python is also having so many ides that it is spider spider okay jupyter notebook jupyter notebook okay pycharm so like this we are having different ides right so anyhow for the data science projects maximum in the real time that we are going to use the spider or jupyter notebook we are not okay very rare we are going to use this pie chart right maximum that we are going to use the jupyter notebook or spider right these two are the ides that we are having these two are the ides that we are having so if you want to install this spider then we have to go to the official website of this spider and then we have to download this spider and then we have to install yes so open source only freely you can download and install these ides next coming to the jupyter notebook okay if you want to jupyter notebook let us go to the official website of this and then let us download and then install yes so like this you have to download and then you have to install these ides see python is not only the programming language that we are going to work with for the data science we are going to work with the r programming also we are going to work with the r programming also so if you want to work with the r programming language then you have to go to the official website of this r that it is www.r-project.org this is the official website for the r programming language 
here we have to go to this r programming and then you have to install that all right so at the time of discussing about this r programming language i will explain that how to install so and so right now our concentration is about on the python programming language once we start with the python programming and then we are going to work with the analysis by using some of the libraries of the python and then we will move to the r programming language all right so anyhow that we have to maintain python programming in our system r programming in our system these two programming languages that we have to install next what is the ide of this pipe r r ide so that it is r studio is the ide okay so for python we are having so many ides not only is the spider or not only a jupiter or pycharm we are having so many ides for the python but r programming language we are having one and only ide that it is called r studio yes so now these are the programming languages just the programming languages okay in this programming languages that if you want to do the work of the data science like analysis or predictive modeling deep learning so and so then you have to use the libraries right then you have to install the libraries in this system and then you have to attach here again you have to download and install these libraries so we are having so many libraries here see for example if you want to work with the numerical python all right so then you have to use this numpy if you want to work on the data structures then you have to use the pandas you have to install this pandas and then you have to work on that yes if you want to work with the natural language toolkit then we have to download this and then you have to install it similarly if you want to work with the scientific okay if you want to work with the machine learning algorithms that it is a scientific kit to learn right then you have to install this right so like this you have to install that whatever that you require to do the analysis and the machine learning concept all right so once again let us start the first we have to install python in our system and then we have to install the r programming in our system and then okay that for that we require the ides why because just now that we observe the difference between the interactive and scripting so we are having lot of difference between this interactive and scripting all right so it is better to take the ides to work with comfortable right there it is there it will makes easier for us to interact with that programming so that's why we are going to prefer this ide ides will support lot of features with the graphical user interface so that's why we are going to install jupiter in our system spider in our system and also r studio ide which belongs to r these are the ides and then we are going to install this numpy pandas scipy sk learn scientific kit learn matplotlib graphical representation cborn advanced graphical representations tiano okay keras tensorflow which belongs to the deep learning so these are all the libraries that we have to install in our systems if you want to work with the data science projects how risky it is how many programming ides libraries that we have to install right so one thing instead of installing this python or ides libraries simply we can install anaconda in our system is it clear so ivanni install chese badulu ee programming languages gaani r manaki data science ku sambandhinchina edaithe programming language untundo edaithe ide untundo edaithe library gaani or functions gaani data science related edaithe undo adantha manaku anukonda la untundi so that's why we are saying that anukonda is a data science distributor so here it is going to distribute that whatever the programming ide libraries that you required for data science right once if you install anaconda in your system then no need to install any other okay programming or libraries here maximum 90% of okay libraries will cover it here itself some rare if you want to install some add ons then we are going to install that we will discuss is it clear right so now let us observe the what is this anaconda what is this anaconda how to download this anaconda and how to install this anaconda but one point that you have to remember 
right at the time of installing anaconda in your system it is better to uninstall python why because whenever if you install the anaconda in your system automatically python is also installed if already it is available second time it will install already you know the problems what okay what will happen if you install two times right so don't do now don't uninstall now let us work with the python some of the sessions after working whenever we entered into the analysis part there we are going to work with this anaconda just let us listen here how to install how to download and how to install this anaconda in our system all right now so this is the point that you have to remember one thing okay once check your system if python is available in your system let us uninstall and let us remove the python files maximum at the time of uninstall only everything will be deleted the folders also will be deleted so manually let us check in the c drive once again if it is there any okay is there any missing folders are there all right so let us remove and then let us start the installation of this anaconda the official website of this anaconda that it is www.anaconda.com www.anaconda.com see once if you observe okay this home page there you can find the the complete buyers guide to enterprise data science platform so whatever that it is having here everything is regarding data science only how to optimize machine learning and data science projects so and so home page okay now let us go to the download the official website that it is www.anaconda.com is the official website and then let us go to the download which is available in the top right let us click on this download button once if you click on this download button then it will move to the okay download page now let us read this what it is anaconda distribution the world's most popular python or data science platform it is all right so the anaconda is not a software anaconda is not a programming language all right so it is one of the platform it is one of the framework where it is going to support where it is going to hold all the programming ides libraries required for data science is it clear right so the world's most popular python or data science platform so here we are getting the python and then the ides of that python r and then ide of the python not only python and r it is it is having some of the tools also some of the tools also it is having all right so once if you observe here so these are all the different okay libraries and programming that it is going to install jupiter ide spider python id numpy numerical python scipy scientific python pandas data structures python uh, data structures library right so tensor flow which belongs to deep learning matplotlib belongs to the graphical representation scientific kit sk kit learn machine learning okay library so like this so many okay libraries are there once if you click on this download and then it will move to this download page here also one of the point that you have to note maximum by default it is selected mac operating system by default it is selected mac operating system so don't download directly let us go to the windows so maximum we are going to use windows operating systems only right so let us click on this windows once if you click on this windows then it will be converted into black color remaining are green color by default it is mac os right don't go to directly download let us click on this windows and then we are we are going to work with the 3.7 version python 3.7 version okay we are having two versions 2.7 and 3.7 we are going to work with the latest version that is 3.7 next step. 